to grab your chair, and it doesn't have to be a fold-out chair. It can be a wooden chair from your dining table. It can be anything that's sturdy and solid. As you can hopefully see here, I have my yoga mat underneath. This is going to help prevent it from slipping and sliding. We will be doing a, a few standing poses, but of course using the chair for support. And then also making sure that you have a couple of cans. So really, it doesn't matter what's in the cans, just as long as it's providing a little bit of weight. Cans are typically about a pound or two, um, so this would give us a little bit of resistance. In all of my chair classes, I try to incorporate a little bit of strength, balance. Uh, of course, this is all yoga, and uh, we're going to be breathing just to get started. So go ahead and grab those items now if you don't have them, and we're going to get started in about a minute and a half. If uh, you're wondering who I am, my name is Brandy, and I've been teaching chair yoga at the Woodlands Yoga Studio um, at least since August or September, I believe. And I love it. It's a lot of fun. I have a great group of people, and I hope you're watching right now. Um, and we typically listen to oldies because it's one of my favorite genres of music. It was, it's what I grew up on. Um, but today, since I'm on video, and I'm not sure how that would translate over this, I'm not adding in any music today. I will be guiding us along using cues and alignment as we move. Some of the poses may look a little bit different if you're used to traditional yoga, but um, they all translate to the chair. So, you know, maybe you're not somebody that has challenges getting up and down off the floor, but maybe one day you get an injury. It's not a reason to stop your yoga. You can always come back to the chair and do chair yoga. So it's great. You can also use some of these poses and things that I will be doing today. Um, if you're at the office or you know maybe you're working from home right now and you're getting a little restless, you can practice some of the breathing exercises that we'll do. You can do any of these poses um, that are seated in the chair or stand up and you know get some poses in that way too. All right, so it's officially 10:30 and let's get started. So, I just want you to get started by sitting comfortably in your chair, moving anything out of the way that's preventing your sit bones from being grounded, and sit up nice and tall. Feel free to lean back in the chair if that's comfortable for you. And then you can rest your hands, palm down or palm up on the tops of your thighs. And then close your eyes or soften your gaze, and just begin to settle in here. Take a moment to acknowledge your breath. Is it quick breaths or slow? Is it filling up your chest and belly? Do you feel nervous or anxious? Just taking note of how the body feels. Maybe your body feels a little cranky today. Not having done yoga for a little while. And that's okay. Just checking in with the body. Allowing ourselves to relax. Be present. Letting all the other worries of today melt away. Setting that to-do list aside. Maybe use this next moment to set an intention. Maybe you just want to find a little more peace today. Or be present throughout our practice. Or to not let neighbors or pets or kids disturb you. Just focusing on you and your body. Let's begin our first breathing exercise. 
exercise. I'll do it first, so feel free to watch me. And then we can do it together. So on an inhale, I'll begin by inhaling to a count of four. And then at the top of that inhale, I'll pause to a count of four. And then exhale to a count of four. And then I'll pause at the bottom of my exhale for a count of four. Good. And so we'll continue. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Pause. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four. Pause. One, two, three, four. Good. Keep going. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Pause. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four. Pause. One, two, three, four. Good. Continue going. Counting in your head and I'll breathe with you. Good, after your last exhale here, we'll all come back to neutral. Allow your breath to re return back to normal. And then on your next inhale, take a look at your feet, make sure that they're grounded, pressing firmly into the floor mat. And then on an inhale, we'll inhale, reach the arms up, nice long stretch. And then exhale, turn the palms away and fold forward. <sighs> Good, inhale, reach it up. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reach. And exhale, fold. Inhale, reach. And exhale, fold. Inhale, reach. And exhale, fold. And on this exhale, we'll just pause here. Let your head, neck, and shoulders go. Just be weightless here. And don't feel like you have to look at me the entire time we're moving. Feel free just to follow along with my voice. be heavy and slowly round all the way back up to seated. Good. On the next inhale, we'll reach our hands up. My right hand is going to grab my left, reach it up towards the ceiling, and then exhale over to the right. Good. We can pause here, pressing the left sit bone back down into the chair. Or we can take a gaze up towards the ceiling, opening up the chest, making the stretch just a little bit deeper. And then it may feel challenging to breathe with your arms up and over, but focus on feeling the breath, your belly up with your breath. And on your next inhale, we'll reach back up for the ceiling. And exhale, release the arms down. Good. Feel free to take a shoulder roll or two. And then inhale, reach the hands back up. This time, the left hand's going to grab the right wrist as both palms turn towards the ceiling. Reach the fingertips up 
and then over to the left. Remember, we're grounding down that right sit bone and the option to take the gaze underneath the tricep, opening the chest up for a slightly deeper stretch. And then return back to your breath. Feel free to keep your eyes open or closed, whatever feels good and comfortable for you here. We want to stretch, but we don't want to be straining. Good. Now inhale back to upright and exhale, release the arms down. Good. Feel free to take another shoulder roll or two here. Good. And then sitting upright, shoulders stacked over hips, sit bones pressing firmly into the chair. We'll extend the right arm out, thumb up. Then on an exhale, we're going to take the right arm across the body and take a hold of the back of the tricep elbow area. And we're going to bring the arm in towards the chest and then this shoulder, as you see, is kind of lifting up towards my ear. We're going to draw that down. Good. And then we're just going to pause here, getting a little stretch into the shoulder, maybe even the tricep a little bit. You might feel it in different areas depending on where you're tight. And we're just drawing the arm back and breathing. And then on your next exhale, we'll gently release the right arm, extending it back out and then down. Good. The left arm extends out on an inhale. And then exhale, this arm crosses across the body and the opposite hand will press into the back of the tricep elbow. And we'll draw the left shoulder down. Good. So we're reaching the fingertips and the shoulder is resisting. We're using our opposite hand for a little push-pull pressure on the back of the tricep and elbow. Staying up nice and tall and continuing to breathe. Gently release the left arm, extend it back out long, and then release it down. Good. On our next exercise here, our next pose, it's going to be more comfortable to scoot forward just a little bit into to the edge of the chair. We're going to reach our hands behind us. I'm going to turn around just so you can see what I'm doing behind my back, but I want you to stay right here. So for us, we're going to take our hands. And it'll probably go in that space behind the chair, or you might have to reach it up. And we're going to place the hands clasped together at the small of the back. So Yogi's choice to extend them out long and open up through the chest, maybe lifting the gaze to the ceiling if that's comfortable. Or we can keep this active pulling apart between the hands. So Yogi's choice long or active, trying to pull the hands away from each other, like we were trying to rip or grasp. Good. So staying, sitting up nice and tall, taking our option one or two, long arms or bent, and breathing. Getting a good stretch throughout the front of the chest. Sit bones pressing firmly into the chair, shoulders stacked over the hips. We'll draw the crown of the head up towards the ceiling, so we're long throughout the spine. And then we're going to twist from this low rib, so right here only, we don't want the hips to come along. So on an exhale, we'll twist over towards the right. Left hand can press on the outside of the right thigh, and the back hand can come around to the back of the chair. Good. We can take our gaze over to the right, or we can look over that right shoulder. 
If looking over the shoulder is too painful or uncomfortable on your neck, just look over to the right. And from here, from our long spine, back hand supporting us, lead hand just gently helping us come into our twist, we'll breathe. Sit bones are grounded, 
If you feel your sit bones coming up away from the chair as you hinge forward, just come back to where they're touching again. All right, we'll hinge forward here. Finding our stretch and end point. Keeping this activation with the toes. And breathe. And it may be tempting to round the spine here a little bit, but the longer you keep the spine, the more stretch you're going to find into the back of this hamstring. And just two more breaths. And then inhale, back to upright. Set the left foot back in underneath the knee. And then we're going to bring the hands to the tops of the knees. If it feels better to scoot back in the chair a little bit, feel free to do so. But we want to keep lots of freedom for our hamstrings here and our back away from the back of the chair. So we're going to bring our hands to the fronts of the knees. And then we're going to move through a little cat-cow here. So cat-cow here is an inhale, bringing the chest and belly forward, arching the spine, lifting the gaze. For our cow pose. And then exhaling, drawing the belly button in, rocking back onto the sit bones, and drawing the chin down towards the chest for our cat pose. Good. And then continue moving with your own inhales and exhales. I'm going to turn sideways so you get a nice view of where my spine is moving for our cat cow. So my feet are grounded. Inhaling, coming into my cow pose, finding that arch in my spine, drawing my chest through, and lifting my gaze. And then on an exhale, I'm tucking my tail under, pulling my chin in towards my chest, and sending the back of my spine towards the wall behind me. Good. And then we'll continue moving. Trying to find the full length of the inhale and exhale with each cat or cow. And no worries whether it gets stuck on an inhale in an opposite direction. We just want to make sure that we're still breathing. Good. Two more. And last one. Good. And then from here, starting from neutral, I want you to move around to any way that feels good to you. So maybe that means some big old barrel rolls. Just taking your torso as if you had a hula hoop, rocking from one sit bone to the other, getting your spine on board. Maybe you'd like to get your shoulders involved. Maybe that means just arching from side to side, shortening the space between the ribs and hips. Just what is your spine asking for in this moment? Listening to the body and being mindful during our practice is very important. We want to keep our bodies safe. We want to listen to them and kind of feed the body what it needs. Good. Just two more breaths in this free movement through cat and cow. If you're not sure what to do, you can always follow along with me. Or stay with our traditional cat and cow. No worries. All right, one more breath. All right, good. Everyone leaning back in neutral. And I want you to take a hold of your weights. Good. All right, we can sit up in our chair. We can come further back in the chair if that's more comfortable, or you can stay right where we were. So the exercises we're going to be doing today are mostly for the shoulders. I want us to focus on also keeping core engagement, staying up nice and tall, 
posture. So shoulders down and back, chest forward, core engaged. And that means if you press here, it may be a little soft and that's okay, mine is too. If you press here in your abdominal area, it should feel a firmness underneath. Okay, so we're up tall, core is engaged, and we're going to start with our weights down by our sides. So our first exercise today is front raises. So we're going to take the cans and we're going to extend the right arm first, palm down. We're going to bring the can to about nose height and then release it back down. Inhale, left, comes up to about the nose, and then release it back down. Good, continue moving with our front raises. Remember, chest up, core is engaged, alternating from side to side. And it's okay if your cans run into the, the chair, they'll still be good later. Good, so just alternating. Back and forth, palms down, coming to about nose, face height. And if maybe one arm is not on board today, or maybe both arms are not on board today with the front raises, just do the best you can. All about progress, not perfection, and movement instead of non-movement. Good. So let's just do two more on each side. So that's one, one, two, two. Good. And then just let your weights rest on the tops of your thighs. Can up or down. And then we're going to move on to lateral raises. So we're going to start with the cans in the same position down by our sides. And then on an inhale, we're going to bring both arms up laterally out to the sides. Once again, palm down. And then exhale, release. Remember, engage the core. Breathe as we extend the arms out to the sides. And then exhale as we lower them back down. Inhale, extend it up. And exhale, release. Good. Inhale, extend it out. We're taking the arms out to either side about shoulder height. Feel free to take a look and make sure that you're lifting them high, but not too high. Good. Keep moving. I'm pretty warm. I hope y'all are warm too. Remember to breathe with your moment. Let's do three more. One, two, and last one here. Three and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, and slow release. Good. Let your weights rest once again on the tops of your thighs. And take a breath. Feel free to take a big cleansing breath. Maybe that's... <sighs> or... <sighs> whatever feels good to you. Whatever your body is asking for, just make sure that you're breathing. Taking a pause in between our exercises. And then let's get ready. Exercise number three here with our weights. So here we're going to come into cactus arms. So that means that my tricep is parallel to the floor and my arms, my hands are reaching straight up towards the ceiling. So now instead of down, my palms are facing up. And I don't want my wrists collapsing. So I don't want my wrists to collapse. I want them to stay straight up and down. So we're trying to take the crease out of the wrist. Okay, so I have my cactus arms. And here I'm going to press up and bring my, my weights together and then come right back to my cactus arms. I'm gonna turn around just for a moment so you can see what my shoulders are doing here. So as you see, I start from my cactus arms, I extend up, and then I hug back down. Good, extend up, and hug down. 
but keep moving. Inhaling, pressing up, and exhaling, releasing back down, or vice versa, as long as we're breathing. Good. Pressing up, and hugging back down. Good. Let's do four more. One. Two. Three. Last one. Four and hold. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And release. Ha, let those weights rest into your lap for just a moment. Maybe move those shoulders around. We've done a lot of work for the shoulders so far. And then let's prepare for the next one. So we're going to come back to the edge of the seat just because we want to have a clearance for our arms as they come down by our sides. We're going to make sure that we're firmly grounded into the floor or mat. So that means that our, our ankles are right underneath our knees. Big toe is grounded, pressing in. And then from here, we're going to hinge forward. Our arms are going to come down by our sides. Fingertips reaching down and grasping our weights. Then on an inhale, staying hinged at the side here. I'll turn so you can see here. So as you can see, my torso is not actually touching the tops of my thighs, but I am forward. And from here, big toe grounded, hinged forward. I'm going to keep my upper body right where it's at, but I'm going to lift my arms and hands and hug those shoulder blades, just like that. So my arms are out. As if, I'm, as if I'm flying or reaching out in both directions. Good. And then exhale and release. Inhale, extend it out. And exhale, lower down. Continue to move at your own breath or follow along with me. No worries. Good. Inhale. And exhale, release. Inhale, extend it out. And exhale, lower down. Let's do three more. One. Two. And three. And while we're here, let's go ahead and lower our weights back down underneath our chair so they're all the way. We'll come to sitting upright. And if you're feeling anything like me, whew, that was a lot of work. We did four weight-bearing exercises, which is very good as we age, because starting in about our 30s, we start losing bone density. So this is very important, which is part of the reason why I incorporate it in all my classes, all my chair classes. So sitting up nice and tall, let your shoulders stack back over your hips. Close your eyes or soften your gaze. And just begin to breathe again, steadying your breath. Good. Just two more breaths. sequences, my warrior ones, my typically standing postures, a little bit different than you might see in books. And I do this because I've noticed a lot of my clients are not capable, myself included, of extending their legs in such a deep pose because our chair is very low to the floor. And even in a standing pose, we're not going to get down that low, typically. So what we're going to do Right foot is going to stay pointing towards me, ankle underneath the knee. The left foot is going to turn out towards the side. So this is going to be our front. Okay, so the side that's pointing out. We're going to turn our torso to that leg. Okay, and as you notice, 
is not going all the way, but that's okay. We get a lot out of these poses. From here, we're going to reach the fingertips up. So this is our warrior one. My feet are grounded. Big toes are pressing firmly into the mat. I'm squeezing my thighs as if they were going to press together. I'm engaging my core, staying long throughout my spine. Palms are facing each other. And I'm breathing. And then on our next exhale, we'll release the fingers for the front and back of the room. So my left fingertips are reaching long out over my left toes, and my right hand is reaching out behind me. Good, so this is our warrior two. And you might notice my shoulders are up close to my ears, so I'm going to draw them down. Shoulder blades are heavy. Gaze is over the lead fingertips. Big toe mounds are pressing firmly into the mat. Thighs are acting as if they want to close and squeeze in towards each other. Come back to the breath. Set your dristy or your gaze out on those left fingertips. And then on your next exhale, left forearm is going to come top to the top of the left thigh as if you have a serving platter here. Back hand is going to come up and over next to the ear. So my bicep is next to the ear. My right fingertips are reaching into the direction of where my left toes are facing. My left forearm is pressing firmly into the top of my thigh and I'm once again drawing my shoulder away from the ear. And I can keep my gaze here, looking forward or off to the side, or I can take my gaze to that right tricep. Opening up the chest just a little bit more. Be mindful of my core, my big toe mounds, my forearm drawing my shoulder away from the ear. And breathe. Good. Now I'm here from our side angle. We're going to take the top hand down to the hip. Left hand is going to reach forward and scoop the sky, finding our reverse warrior. So I'm keeping weight, drawing this low hip down. Left fingertips are reaching long, so I'm really finding space in both sides of the body. Big toe mounds are still pressing firmly into the mat. And then on an exhale, left hand reaches back down, coming back to the hip. My left toes are going to come back around to the front of the mat. My right toes are now going to turn out to the side, ankle underneath the knee. Left ankle is going to come underneath the knee as well, so we're setting up here for our warrior one. Bottom rib will turn towards that right knee. And then inhale, reach the hands up. Good. We're in our warrior one now. Big toes grounded, core is engaged, palms facing each other, shoulders down and back, broad across the collarbones. And breathing. As you see, my torso turns back towards the side. Fingertips reach in opposite directions. Maybe take a peek over at the right fingertips, making sure that they're coming straight out from the shoulder. And then another check towards the back fingertips, making sure that they're parallel to the floor. And then return the gaze back towards the right fingers. Shoulders are down, drawing away from the ears. Broad across the collarbones, big toe mounds are grounded. And breathe. And then on the next exhale, right forearm comes to the top of the right thigh, setting up our serving platter hand. 
Shoulder draws away from the air. Top hand comes up and over for side angle. Gaze is out to the side or up towards the top tricep. And we're breathing. Are your big toe mounds engaged? Are you breathing? Are you pressing firmly through that right forearm? Is the core engaged? Good. And then we'll take that top hand down to our left hip. Right hand reaches out and scoops the sky. We'll keep space on both sides of the body. Here in our reverse warrior. Remember to take your nice full breaths. Gaze is looking up towards the ceiling, fingertips, or straight out. Whichever one is more comfortable on the neck. And then on the next exhale, we'll take that top hand down. Let it come right to the hip, and we'll turn back towards the front of our chair. <sighs> Good. Let's do that one more time seated. So we're going to take the left toes out, right toes are forward. Torso turns towards our left leg, which is now our front. Inhaling, reaching the fingertips up towards the ceiling, broad across the collarbones. Feeling grounded in our chair and throughout our big toes. And then exhale, release, warrior two. Fingertips reaching in opposite directions. Lower body stays right where it's at. Shoulders draw away from the ears. And then on the next exhale, lead forearm comes to side angle. Top of the thigh. Top. Hand comes up and over. So the hip, left fingertips reach out and scoop the sky for our reverse warrior. I think I actually like seated reverse warrior better because you can really ground down this hip and find length so easy on both sides of the body. Still a lot of work, but easier to find that length. And then exhale, release the left hand down. Turn all ten toes back towards me. And then we'll turn the right toes out, making sure that our ankles are underneath our knees. Big toe mounds are pressing firmly in. Torso turns towards that right knee. And inhale, reach the fingertips up. And then exhale, open up, warrior two. Fingertips reaching, shoulder blades hugging, gaze over those right fingertips. Big toe mounds engaged, core is engaged. And then on an exhale, we'll take that right forearm to the top of the thigh for side angle. Top hand reaches up and over. Move that shoulder away from the ear by pressing the forearm down. Serving platter hand on the bottom. And then top hand comes to the hip. Right hand reaches out, scoops the sky. Reverse warrior. And then exhale, top hand comes to the hip. All ten toes turn back towards me. Good. Now we're going to use the same sequence, but we're going to stand and let the chair support us. So, feel free to stand however is comfortable to you. And we're going to come around to the left side of the chair. And so on the left side of the chair, we want the left leg forward. And we want the right foot back. And the right foot is turned towards... The front right corner of the mat. So typically, your mat would be a little bit set up a little bit more like this. And we would be here. Left foot forward, right foot back. 
Right toes facing the front right corner. Good. But for instructional purposes, I will be facing this direction. Good. So left foot is forward, right foot is back. Take a peek. Use your right hand. Let the chair support you here. Take a peek. Make sure that that left knee is over the left ankle. We're pressing firmly through both big toe mounds, squeezing the legs in towards midline and left and right. Good. Hips are turning towards the front of the mat here. And then on an inhale, left hand reaches up for our warrior one. Good. And you might see my belly pop out just a little bit. That means I let go of my core. So I want to engage the core and hug it back in. See the difference here? Letting it go, hugging it in. Good. One hand can stay on the chair for stability, or if you feel good here, we have the option of releasing both hands up to the ceiling and always having this chair for support. But make sure that you're feeling comfortable in the hips and legs if you decide to let go of the chair. Good. And here from our warrior one, we can transition into our warrior two by releasing this left hand down nice and long and taking the back foot parallel to the back of the mat. Good. So here you may be wondering, well, are my feet proper? So we want the left heel to intersect the instep of the back foot, or that foot can be a little bit wider over if you feel better balance. But anywhere in between those two spaces is great. So now our hips are turning out towards the side, left fingertips are reaching along. I'm keeping my right hand on the chair for stability. Left knee is still over the left ankle, and I'm squeezing my thighs in towards midline and grounding down on the back outside blade of the foot in my lead big toe mount. Good. Torso is nice and long. I can turn my, gaze, my chest towards the side while still holding onto the chair and my gaze over to the left fingertips. Warrior two. And breathe. And then on my next exhale, lead form comes to the top of the lead thigh. And I'm pressing the forearm into the top of the thigh. Again, you can see I have my serving platter hand. I'm pressing my shoulder away from my ear, and my gaze is going to go towards the side. And I'm breathing here. Legs stay exactly the same as they were in warrior two. Squeezing them in towards midline, pressing out through the outside blades of the feet in the big toe mount. One more full breath in and out. And then on my next inhale, I'll rise using the chair and my forearm to come back up. My left hand is going to reach forward and I'm going to hinge and scoop. Good. I'm keeping this hand on the chair or back hand can come to the hip if I'm feeling sturdy. But remember, our gaze can stay forward or lifted and that might also change the view of balance for you today. And then on your next exhale, we'll release that top hand, bring it to the hip, and we're going to take a look at that back foot, and we're going to step it up all the way to the front. Good. You can keep a hand on the chair, and we're just going to travel to the opposite side now. So now the right leg is forward, left foot is back, so the left toes are facing the front left corner of the mat, and I'm going to bend into that right knee. Now you notice I don't have a deep bend going on. I just want to make sure that my alignment, my knee, is over that ankle. Gives me good support, good stability. Big toe mound is rounded. Back big toe mound is rounded. Hips are turning towards the front of the room. Core is engaged, so my belly is not dumping. I'm here. Right hand can reach up when you're ready. Feeling sturdy. Gaze can look out, can look towards me, or just focus on your breath. Make sure you're pressing firmly through that back leg. And then on your next exhale, we'll open up Warrior Two. So I'm swiveling on that back foot. Outside blade of the foot turns parallel to the back of the mat. Right fingertips reach out. Long. Gaze is over towards the right fingertips. 
Torso is now turned to the side. Core is still engaged. And then on your next exhale here, we'll transition to side angle. Right forearm presses into the top of the right thigh. We're going to press away, drawing the shoulder away from the ear. I can even use a chair here to help turn towards the side just a little bit more. And breathe. Long spine. Take a little peek down and see if you can see those toes just peeking out of the back. Still pressing out through the outside blade of the back foot and big toe mount for the right. Good. Inhale one more time. Exhale, release. And then on your next inhale, we'll rise. Keeping the legs right where they are, right fingertips, reach out. Hands just ever so slightly and scoop the sky. Finding our reverse warrior, still supported by the chair. Gaze can stay lifted up towards the ceiling or fingertips or bring it back down just a little bit if that's uncomfortable on your neck. And remember to breathe. Are you pressing your big toe mounds in? Is your core engaged or are you dumping in the low back? Are you long throughout that front arm? Good. And then exhale, release. Right hand comes to the hip. The left hand holds on to the chair. We'll step that back foot up, back to the front of the mat. Good. One more time on each side. Left foot forward, right foot back. Warrior one. Inhaling that left hand up when you're ready. Nice and strong. Strong warrior poses here. And breathing. If these poses are not comfortable to do standing, Feel free to repeat them once again in the chair. No worries. On your next exhale, open it up, warrior two. And then exhale, side angle. Forearm presses firmly into the top of the thigh and pulling the shoulder away from the ear. Back to upright. 
Good. Now we're going to move into our, our balance pose for the day. Oh, sorry about that. We are actually doing one more thing here at the chair. So I'm going to turn my chair just so you can see me sideways, but you can leave your chair right there. So from here, we're actually going to use the seat of the chair. Okay, so we're going to bring our palms down to the chair. We're going to leave the left foot forward underneath the hip, and we're going to step the right foot back. And you see, I bent into this left foot, and I'm just going to get a little bit of a stretch throughout the calf. I have really stretchy calves, so it's a bit of a challenge for me to get one here without the wall. So if you're like me, and stepping back with this back leg, you're not finding a stretch in the calf, we can always bring it to the front of the chair here, and bend in. Now I get a little bit of a stretch here. Whew, yeah, there it is. Good, so two options. Using the chair leg, if you have a chair like I have here, hands and weight stay into the seat, or stepping one foot forward and one foot back, and sending that heel down towards the floor. Good, so Yogi's Choice, finding our calf stretch using the leg of the chair, or stepping back and sending the heel down towards the mat. And then we'll just breathe here. Two more breaths. Good. And then after that second breath here, we'll switch over to the opposite side, recreating whatever you did on the opposite side on this side. So we're either using the chair leg or stepping back and sending the heel down towards the mat. Just be aware of your calves, be mindful. What are they asking for? Do they need a light stretch or a deep stretch? Are we bringing, being active, pressing through the big toe mound? Or are we being passive? Yoga for me is a lot about listening and learning about the body. About your body in specific, or my body for me in specific. micro bend into the knees if your knees tend to hyperextend like mine. And then we're just going to step one foot back and one step forward. So we're in a narrow pyramid pose. So this might be a little bit deeper of a stretch for this lead leg into the hamstring and calf. But let's breathe through it. Okay? Remember, if anything is painful, we don't want to do that. But we do want to find a good solid stretch. Good. You can even put a little bend into the elbows here if you need a little bit more of a stretch into your hamstring or calves and you're just not getting it with the elbows long. So yogi's choice, palms down on the chair, arms long or bent. Good. And both toes are facing forward towards the chair here. Yeah, that's 
do two more breaths here. Good. I'm going to angle my back foot open just a little bit, give myself my hips some space, and then I'm going to pull back my bowstring to the opposite hand, pressing through the right hand and open up. Then on my next exhale, I'll gently release the left hand back down towards the chair, drag my right foot back underneath the hip, and step the left one to meet it. Good. From here, I'll walk my hands up to the back of the chair, and then I'm going to come around to either side of the chair. For teaching purposes, I'm just going to turn my chair here so y'all can see me best. And so. I'm going to start on this side because the left leg is going to be my first weight bearing leg. And we have options here. So for our tree pose today, our first place can be here. Ball of the foot pressing into the mat, heel coming in contact with the bottom of the outside of the calf. And then I press the leg into the heel and the heel into the leg. My next option, keeping a hand onto the chair, keeping my weight into the left foot, put my left hand there for balance, is I can set my foot up to my calf and do the same push pull. So push in with the foot, press back with the leg. Or my last option here, foot presses into the thigh and the thigh resists by pressing back. So they're pressing into each other and then wherever you decide to be, grow long throughout the spine, Gaze is straight ahead on something non-moving or dristy. And then right hand can come up and create our tree. All right, so we have our push pull. Right fingertips are reaching up, long throughout the spine, for our tree pose, and breathe.
hand in that last breath. We're going to close the space between the thighs. So there's no space, no light coming in between my thighs. We're going to do one more twist. So here, grow tall. Shoulders over sit bones and hips. We're going to twist from that bottom rib towards the right. Right leg is over the left. Turning to the right. Left hand can once again come to the outside of the right thigh. And the right hand can come to the back of the chair. Lower your sit bones grounded into the chair. Spine is nice and long. Gaze is over to the right or over the right shoulder. Good. On your next exhale, we'll gently release, coming back around to the front. Uncross the legs, and then we'll recreate on the opposite side. So left knee lifts up, we'll cross the left ankle over the top of the right, and if this side feels a little bit more stiff than the other, don't worry. No two sides of the body are the same. So we're actively pressing this ankle down into the top of the thigh. Toes are engaged, once again, protecting our knee by engaging all those little tiny muscles. If we need a little bit more, left hand can come to the center of the left thigh and we can hinge forward. One or the other or both. And then we breathe. Here in our figure four stretch. It could also be called seated pigeon. It's one of my favorite poses. Gently release and cross the left over the right. So the space has gone in between the thighs. We'll grow tall throughout the spine. Twist from that low rib over towards the left and then place the right hand on the outside of the left thigh and the back hand on the back of our chair. And then from here, we're still just breathing. Here in our twist. And then on your next exhale, we'll gently release, turning back around towards the front, and uncross our legs. Good. From here, we'll extend our legs out long, reach our arms up and overhead. If you'd like to interlace your thumbs, feel free to do so. Big, full body stretch. And then exhale, release everything down. Good, so now we're going to set up for our savasana, and we have a couple of options. So we can stay right here in our chair. This is perfectly fine, sitting up nice and tall, letting our back relax onto the chair, palms down or palms up. Or we can do legs on the chair, so that means that we would lay out long onto the mat, let our calves rest on the seat of the chair, and then palms can rest down by our sides or on our belly. And anywhere you've decided to choose, feel free to close your eyes or soften your gaze. Come back to the breath. Maybe just acknowledge any changes that your body may have made in this last hour and six minutes. your thoughts tend to come back to your grocery list, your to-do list, yesterday, tomorrow, 10 minutes from now. Come back to the present moment. Come back to the breath, following its presence through your nostrils, filling up the stomach and chest, and then once again as it exits the body, your belly lowers your chest lowers, and you feel the breath exit back out through the nostrils. Allow your body to be heavy and relaxed. Release any mu muscle tension still remaining in the legs and thighs. Relax the hips and torso. 
Relax the shoulders and arms. Letting your palms rest gently on the tops of your thighs. Letting all the small muscles of your face relax. Your jaw to gently part. And your tongue to press to the back of your teeth or rest in the back of your mouth. Remember to come back to your breath if your mind begins to wander and enjoy your savasana. Roll your wrists and ankles if that feels good to you. Or maybe take one more big stretch. And then on an exhale, release it all back down. If you're on the floor or mat, feel free to roll to one side and pause here.
pressing yourself back up to seated. And then everyone bringing your hands to heart center. I greatly appreciate your presence today. Or whenever you were able to take time to spend on your yoga. Remember if things are feeling stressful or too much in the world, always come back to the breath. You can use your box breathing like we did at the beginning of class, or you can simply just acknowledge the breath as it moves in and out of the body. I hope all of you are able to find some peace, comfort, flexibility, and strength today, inside and out. I love you all, my beautiful yogi friends, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.